Good morning and welcome back to another edition of Sunday Focus. Music can be someone's escape from the world. It inspires us to feel emotions at any moment like happiness, anger, and sadness. Sometimes music even triggers a memory that brings us back to that moment all over again. The South Dakota Symphony Orchestra, for example, welcomes everyone to engage and enjoy nights of wonderful music every year. They're really excited about their new season and can't wait to share the programs with you. And we have a spectacular guest joining us in the studio to tell us more about the upcoming 2024-2025 season at the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra. It's Delta David Geyer. Good morning, David. Good morning. You have a unique name, Delta David Geyer. You are the music director and conductor with the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra. And I just want to get into your name, Delta David how did that name come up first? I heard that it's an interesting story. Well, it is a family name. It's uh, so my grandfather, my father, and my son. We all have the first name Delta, and we all have diff- different middle names, and we all go by our middle names. So go figure that. So I, I inherited it from uh, from a couple of generations back. Wow. So are you the third, fourth Delta? I'm the third one. My my son is the fourth. So is there going to be a fifth one? I, beats me. It's, it's <laughs> totally up to him and his wife. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us this morning and giving us a little bit of your time. Before we get into the season, I do want to hear a little bit more about you. Now, I did a little research. You went to the University of Michigan and you must be in a good mood after the championship victory recently. <laughs> well, I suppose if I really followed sports, I would be. But yeah, it's, you know, like, yeah, I mean, Michigan's always been, you know, pretty, um, pretty up there in both football and basketball. And so, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my alma mater oh, yeah, for absolutely. a lot of reasons. <laughs> absolutely. What did you study at the University of Michigan? Oh, music. You know, I was I was a trumpet player to begin with. But then I when I switched over conduct to conducting the University of Michigan at the time had the best conducting program in the country. Uh, so that's, you know, and that's as a musician, that's why you go to any school. You go because of the teacher. You don't go because of the school. So that I, I wanted to study with this person. Were you from Michigan or you just got the call and said, all right, Michigan, I'm coming for you? Well, I knew about the University of Michigan. Um, I was not from Michigan. I spent <laughs> six summers at Interlochen, which is a, a summer music festival camp in northern Michigan, which is, you know, it's huge. It's really something. So that was very influential. Of course, University, University of Michigan had a presence there. So it was, you know, it, it, it was not unfamiliar territory to me. Yeah. You have worked all over the map. You worked in countries like Italy, Hungary, Poland, and Turkey, just to name a few. Now tell us a little bit more about your travels overseas and your career there. Well, um, I still do that. I go, I do, for instance, I do a, a music festival in Hungary every year in the summer. But, uh, you know, I got my start conducting in Eastern Europe on a Fulbright. I spent two years living over there and I conducted probably 20 orchestras from Poland all the way down to Turkey. And but I've also had the opportunity to conduct a lot in Central and South America and in Asia, like Singapore and China and Thailand. Um, so, yeah, it's always a busman's holiday for me. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow your travels led you here to South Dakota. You're the music director, conductor with the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra. Tell us a little bit more about your role with the symphony and how you ended up here in South Dakota. Well, actually, there's a New York Philharmonic uh, uh, connection there. Uh, the New York Philharmonic played the very first concert in the Washington Pavilion when it when it opened twenty mm. some years ago, and um, I was I was an assistant conductor at the New York Philharmonic for fifteen years, so I was not with the Philharmonic on that particular tour, uh, but uh, the SDSO invited uh, clarinetists to come play. To come as a soloist, uh, you know, during one of the subsequent seasons. And uh, I was at work one day in New York, and this uh, clarinetist came up to me and said, Hey, David, I just came back from South Dakota. I played the Nielsen, which is probably the most difficult clarinet concerto. And I said, Oh, yeah, how'd that go? And uh, he said, It went really well. They're looking for a conductor. Are you interested? I said, Should I be? He said, Yeah, <laughs> you should be interested in this job. So that was, you know, the reason that I threw my hat in the ring. Um, I mean, I lived in New York for 20 years before I came here and 
Well, it was surprising to me to find exactly what I was looking for in a place like Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, I was not, I was never really interested in just presenting concerts. Like, you know, I had, I had opportunities to take, you know, orchestra jobs in the New York area, you know, Connecticut, New Jersey, mm -hmm. whatever. And they're smaller orchestras, but like, golly, you know, they were just doing, you know, five, six, seven concerts a year. And, you know, of course, I love to make music. I love to conduct, but I really wanted to build something significant. I wanted to, to really explore what it means for an orchestra to impact its community. So um, when I came here as a candidate, it was really evident that this orchestra is super valuable to this community. I mean, it's over 100 years old, right? I mean, the, the state was like less than 30 years old when they founded yeah. an orchestra. You know, and it's I I jokingly say it's I chalk it up to Norwegian Lutherans, you know, I mean, they, but but I, seriously, I mean, those Scandinavians which settled, settled this upper Midwest, they're the reason that the arts are so vibrant all over. Like you look at the Twin Cities, like the, you know, they have two major orchestras in, 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 you know, in Minneapolis isn't even like nearly the size of Chicago or New York or Los Angeles, but yet it's got these vibrant musical, has a vibrant musical life, theater, dance, opera, everything. And it, I think it's because these Northern Europeans, which settled this part of the, the country, were so invested in, in creating uh, a meaningful culture. It was so much a part of their lives. And that was evident to me when I came. You know, I mean, the orchestra was well supported. It was easily two or three times as big and as good as it should be in a city this size. Now it's like, I don't know, five or ten times as big and, <laughs> and as good as it should be for a city of, of 200,000 people. And, uh, and it's because of the investment. Like, I'm standing on the shoulders of the people who built this thing, you know, and hopefully taking it further now and and you know helping them. I mean it's it's truly I don't say this only because I love it and it's what I do but it's one of the treasures of not just of Sioux Falls of the but of the entire state of South Dakota because it's of such high quality and you know it's uh it, it's significant to have this kind of a, an organization in in Sioux Falls so did that surprise you the most when you came to South Dakota is the orchestra and just the culture in general mm -hmm. of the state yes Right. Absolutely. And the people wanted to do something significant. I mean, they weren't looking like, like I wasn't, they weren't looking for somebody to just come in and wave their arms, you know, so the orchestra yeah. could play. They, they really wanted somebody to invest in the community and create meaningful programming. So that's, that's what we've done for now 20 seasons. That's wonderful. If you are just listening, we are being joined in the studio right now with the music director and conductor for the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra, Delta David Geyer. And David, you have accomplished quite a lot in your career. You also helped create a fantastic project called the Lakota Music Project. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Well, that goes from this, you know, creating something significant. Um you know, I, I worked for these big institutions uh, for so long. You know, I was on staff with the New York Philharmonic, conducted Philadelphia, Cleveland, Chicago sym uh, symphonies. And and what the the programming that they did outside of the pro of the concert hall was always ancillary. You know, and I always felt weird about that because, you know, every orchestra has educational programs and things like this that they do. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, like if you really want to impact your community, you have to put more effort into it than that. So that I brought that idea with me when I came and I found myself one one evening, I think it was within a couple, within a couple three months of living here. Uh, it was at a reception, I think, for the American Cancer Society. And I was talking with this young African-American woman. And uh, she was in charge of the Martin Luther King Day activities mm. in Sioux Falls. And I said, well, you know, we should do something together, you know, like a lot of orchestras play MLK concerts and have African-American artists and composers. She's smiling. She's nodding. She said, David, I'm a black woman living in Sioux Falls. Um, I don't have the kind of problems that you think I do. If you want to talk about racial prejudice in, in South Dakota, it's Native American." And after 20 years of living in New York, my jaw hit the ground. Mm. 
you know, because yeah. where I come from, you know, racial prejudice was black, mm -hmm. maybe Hispanic. And I'm looking at this. I'm like, what, what did these people ever do? Why are they prejudiced against? Mm -hmm. So uh, we held a lunch end of my first season. So we're talking spring of 2005 um, for Native American leaders in this area. And I came in with all kinds of ideas, you know, about what we might do together. And I was met with total distrust. Mm. What's in it for you? Who's making money? Kevin Costner dances with wolves. I mean, I, <laughs> I got both barrels, right? Wow. And it was, it was my first lesson in learning to shut up and listen, you know, because I didn't know what I didn't know. And these were the people who were going to teach me. And there was one guy who came up to me afterwards, Barry LeBeau. He's working with United Sioux Tribes in Pierre. And he came up to me and he says, you know, you're crazy, but I'd like to try to help you. <laughs> so, Barry, I, I jokingly called him my Indian guide. And he, he called us Butch and Sundance because we'd, hop, we'd jump in a car. And for two years, intermittently, we would go across the state. And he would introduce me to tribal leaders and elders, uh, cultural leaders, you know. Uh, and out of that came a program that is side by side with our musicians and Lakota and Dakota musicians. And so we have, you know, the Creekside singers from Pine Ridge, the, the drumming group. We have Brian Akipa, Cedar flute player from Sisseton that are part of this project. And the, the project got its start in 2009. We took four years to build it, you know, it was very carefully built in because we were listening to each other. We were building the program. We were basically asking the question, what kind of program could we create by the sharing of music where we could come out of on the other side of a program and understand each other better? You know, yeah. not saying, oh, we're prejudiced in this and that and the other. Rather, like, let's let's demonstrate what friendship might look like between our races. And uh, so we've been doing this for 15 years now. Uh, intermittently, depending on funding. Um, but we've taken it to Washington, D.C. Um, we've toured all over the state, uh, you know, on the res in, in different cities um, around the state. And um, we made a recording, came out, I don't know, a year and a half ago of these new pieces of music that we commissioned for the, the drumming group and the cedar flute player to play with us. And so, which is a very unique sound combining those two to uh, musical elements. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's been a, it's been quite the journey and something I never would have imagined coming from New York, you know, that I would like making music with native Americans that never crossed my mind. So, but here we are, you know, yeah, you, you bloom where you're planted. And exactly. And it sounds like when you get an idea, you just grasp onto it. So when this opportunity came up to you, you just said, you know what? I'm going to try and do what I can and make an impact on on this type of on this type of project. Yeah, I would take it one step further and say that there wasn't an opportunity. It wasn't presented. That's true. It was yeah. like, OK, let's create the opportunity. Let's here's here's a need. Here's a here's a a group of, uh, you know, a group of people, uh, uh, you know, this indigenous population that's willing to work with me. So you find those two elements and. You go in and just, you know, start talking, start listening to each other, create something beautiful. And you do create a lot of opportunities for the Sioux Empire, for the state in general, when it comes to seasons at the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra. And it is going to be a huge season for you guys mm -hmm. for the 2024, 2025. And before we get a rundown of the concerts this year, we've been talking about that word seasons. We're not talking about, you know, fall, spring, winter, anything like that. There's a meaning behind these seasons. So, David, can you explain what seasons mean in orchestra terms? Well, I mean, you know, there's a football season, right? Like yes. it runs from, from this month to this month. So it's similar to that. Um, ours runs from, you know, beginning of October through the end of April. And we have, a, you know, a series of concerts. And um, rather than thinking of it as, you know, different options for entertainment, I think it's helpful for people to to think of a, a season of a symphony orchestra like, like a visit to a museum. 
So if you, if you go to a really, say you're going to the Chicago Art Institute, mm -hmm. you know, and you walk in and if, if you're aware, if you think about it, you, 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 you can sense that the curator of that museum has gone to great trouble to collect art from all over the world, from every epoch, from every style, whatever that person can get their hands on, yeah. just to put it on the wall, non-judgmentally, just to put it on the wall and people to, can come and experience it. And it enriches the city because that is on the wall. Chicago Symphony is the same. South Dakota Symphony is the same when I, I'm the curator. So uh, I put together a season of music because we have over 500 years worth of music that we play. Um, and so it's an it's embarrassment of riches. A lot of the, the greatest music that our quote unquote Western culture has created. And so we and, and no concert is ever the same, ever. Like all of our programming is totally different. Um, but, you know, we put, it, we put it out there for people to come experience it. And some people may say, oh, I really love Beethoven. I want to hear that concert. But some people are like, wow, you know, like this is such a, such a cornucopia of, yeah. of music. And it's all very interesting and curious. I'm going to subscribe. I'm going to, you know, be part of the whole season. Yeah, absolutely. So give us a rundown of what are some of the concerts that people can expect to see this season. Yeah, sure. So we're going to start the first weekend of October. Um, we always try to start and end with a bang. Uh, <laughs> season op opening night is always quite a, I mean, there's all sorts of ancillary celebratory things that go on. But we also try to choose music and artists that are really, um, really sort of top shelf. So um, Berlioz's piece, Symphony Fantastique, I mean, that's, that's not something that everybody's going to be familiar with, but wow, what a piece. I mean, it's like, boom, it's huge impact. Uh, um, and then Rachel Barton Pine is the soloist. Uh, so we invite She's a violinist, and she will play a concerto with the orchestra, which means she's featured, and the orchestra accompanies her. And she's mm -hmm. a you know, world-renowned virtuoso, um, so really looking forward to having her come and, and open our season. Then our pop season starts at the end of October with uh, Capathia Jenkins. And Capathe is a gospel singer. Ah, and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so she'll, she'll come and... Uh, uh, she was here, I don't know, a couple, three years ago and just, you know, brought down the house, you know, and uh, she what a powerhouse of a voice and a presence on stage. And and you got the full orchestra backing her up. It's uh, that'll be spectacular. Absolutely. Um, then in November, um, we're we're the big piece is is the Dvorak Cello Concerto. Uh, interestingly, that piece was the first piece the South Dakota Symphony played in the new Washington Pavilion, and the soloist was Yo-Yo Ma. Oh my gosh! Right? Yeah! So that was a big celebratory evening. This this time, our principal cellist, our beloved principal cellist, Robbie Earhart, is going to be the soloist on the Dvorak. It has not been played you know, by this orchestra in over 25 years. Mm -hmm. It's loved around the world, this piece. Uh, and I said, Robbie, you know, Yo-Yo Ma played it a while back, but no, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all, right? <laughs> yeah. No, no, but Robbie is fantastic. And golly, everybody loves Robbie. And the whole program is sort of, you know, built around that, that, uh, around that concerto. We'll do Handel's Messiah at the beginning of, uh, beginning of December, as we always do. And that's at First Lutheran Church, which is, the perfect piece and perfect setting for that. And a lot of people, you know, the sacred text and the, the, the music, which of course, hallelujah chorus and things like that. Everybody, you know, is familiar with this music and it's just a really a great way to, to enter into the holiday season. Um, and then we'll follow that the next weekend with, uh, with our Christmas with the symphony, which is the pops side of, you know, kicking off the holiday season. <laughs> and, and I've heard for every, every year I hear people say, well, Christmas doesn't start until we go to the pop, the Christmas pops with the symphony. So, and that usually feels, uh, it, it features, uh, you know, a vocalist or two that comes in to sing, you know, Christmas favorites and things. And it features, you know, spectacular arrangements of, of uh, holiday tunes that uh, it features our orchestra in really unique ways, and and it's 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 a really really fun evening. So that that's that's our fall. 
you know, from October through December. Oh, my uh, gosh. You get the feeling of, you know, it's, it's like a lot of different kinds of, of, of things to sample, you know. Um, then we start off the new year with, uh, with Beethoven, Beethoven's Fourth Symphony. Uh, but the first half of that program is really unique. Um, we have uh, Ted Whiprid is the composer of a, of a violin concerto, and we're making the world premiere of this. So Ted was actually our composer in residence for a couple of years, and he still works with us. Um, actually with Lakota Music Project, but uh, he's a wonderful composer. But this piece is done with, you know, and I'm not going to get the, the, the name of the, uh, of the organization right, but there's a, there, there's a climate project. I think it's based in the Bay Area, um, which, is, which helps to, to uh, commission um, new pieces of art that address climate change. Hmm. And so Ted was commissioned by them. So we're giving the world premiere. And, uh, but it also includes a visual element, which I'm going to strain to describe because it's not simply a screen. It's actually throughout the hall. There's, we have to bring in a whole other artist wow. to come in and do this. Like it's, it's, it's an immersive kind of experience uh, that's, that's matched perfectly with, the, with this new piece of music. So it'll be a very unique evening. Oh my gosh! That yeah, right. It's uh, really, really cool. Yeah. Um, the the then that's January, and in February we come back with uh, with a program that is it, it's it's Valentine's Day weekend. It's all about love. <laughs> all, every piece on the program, Romeo and Juliet, uh, by Tchaikovsky. Um, you know, Samson and Delilah, <laughs> and yeah. to, you know, like a lot of really, really great music will feature our musicians. Um, the day after that, so we're talking, what is it, February 16th, it's a concert for kids and families. And this will have the repertoire, the pieces of music that we just played the night before, but it'll be a totally different feel and contextualization. My assistant conductor will conduct this, but you know, it'll be more interactive with the audience. And it's about storytelling and music and yeah. how a composer will use different instruments of the orchestra. It's a great way to get your kids familiar with with the instruments of the orchestra. Like, you know, we'll feature the strings, we'll feature the brass, we'll feature the percussion, you know, so that they get a get an idea of, of you know, and, you know, like, yeah, I mean, we may even have a petting instrument petting zoo. Oh! <laughs> where, where kids can, you know, try out instruments after the concert sure. and things like that. We've done before, which is, you know, again, a good opportunity for parents to, uh, but it, but also with some substance so that older kids can come and still enjoy and, you know, and the whole family can have an outing. Absolutely. If yeah. you were just listening, Delta David Geyer, he is with the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra as the music director and conductor. He is in the studio with us. And you're also doing a special opera production called Giants in the Earth. That's, yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, that's the end of the season. It's the season finale. So I, I like I said, we start and end with something big. <laughs> but this one is really something. So a lot of your... A lot of your listeners are probably familiar with Ole Rovag's novel, Giants in the Earth. Um, it was written 100 years ago. It was originally written in Norwegian. And Ole Rovag taught Norwegian at St. Olaf College for decades. Um, but it tells the story of the first Norwegian settlers coming right here mm -hmm. to where we live in eastern South Dakota. And it was required reading in East Coast prep schools, you know, 80 years ago, because it was the American immigrant story. Uh, the first one that really told about the hardship and what it was like. These homesteaders, the sod huts, the, you know, people going crazy from the sound of the wind. All of that is in this novel, Giants in the Earth. So when I first came... Uh, one of the former board president came up to me and Art Husebo, for those of you who are listening, who is the founder of the Center for Western Studies at Augustana. He gave me a copy of this book and he said, if you want to understand people here, you need to read this book. I'm like, OK, all right, I'll read this book. <laughs> um, and he said, and, you know, there's an opera. And I'm like, oh, OK, there's an opera. Great. So I finally got around to reading the book and uh, it's great. You know, it's a really interesting read. Um, and then I 
research the opera, not only is it an opera, but it's by Douglas Moore, which is a very well-respected opera composer, American opera composer from the mid-20th century. It won the Pulitzer Prize in 1951, huh. this opera. But here's the, here's the deal. It was only performed once, and it was never recorded. Oh. So what better orchestra to revive this, you know, 70-year-old opera and record it than the South Dakota Symphony. Wow. So, yeah, we got funding for this, and we're we're going to do the whole shebang. Um, SDPB's in, in it with us. They're planning on, you know, we, we always live stream our concerts, but I think they, they're planning on making a, you know, a broadcast production of the opera. So it's it's not just, I mean, it's for us. It's very significant for South Dakota, but it's also for the entire nation and it's for the opera world. I mean, this is a opera that's not known. Like if people want to hear this, there's no way to hear it. It's not out there. So yeah, it's, it's, it, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's going to be great. Lots of unique opportunities coming up for the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra. And David, what's the best part about seeing these concerts come together? I just see you get so excited about mm. each one of these shows. I can't tell which one's your favorite. <laughs> That's good. That's right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, we do get excited about putting together a season. It's it's one of the, it, it's arduous. Um, it, it's difficult because you have to consider what the audience wants to hear, what the audience needs to hear, what the orchestra wants to play, what they need to play. All of those things uh, come into play in, in in putting together a season but it's also a joy uh, to get the balance. Um, you know, if you're familiar with any of the music that I just went through, you'll you'll see that it's like you know, there's 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 a big variety. Again, from every culture, from every epoch, from every style. Like you know, that's that's really uh, very. Um, it, it's one of the best parts of my job. Yeah, and it's, again, going to be another amazing season with the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra. You host a bunch of youth programs, too, throughout mm-hmm. the year. Can you tell a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. Well, we do our concerts for third and fourth graders, uh, young people's concerts every year. We fill the hall over three times, and I don't know, five or 6,000 kids come through uh, in one day. Um, but uh, But we also have a youth orchestra program. Uh, underneath the South Dakota Symphony, four different levels. Uh, so from beginning students all the way up through high school. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a real opportunity for kids who are in, you know, studying music in school, but, you know, like for, if they want something more or something more challenging, the repertoire is more challenging than mm-hmm. what they would play with their school orchestra. And they're playing with all the best kids from around you know, around Sioux Falls and around the area, you know, so that's, that's why you have a youth youth orchestra. That sounds awesome. And I know that there are a couple of other opportunities with the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra. You're on the hunt for a couple of positions. Yes. And my assistant conductor, Thomas Fortner uh, of seven years is, is moving to Europe. So, and good for him. Which is amazing. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah, Just stand up and applaud. I mean, he's done such a great job. He's grown so much. Uh, in his work with us. So he's ready to launch. So we are looking for a new assistant conductor. We're looking for a new operations manager, which is the person who handles all the logistics of concert preparation and scheduling and all that sort of stuff. And then we are also looking for a part-time sort of multicultural liaison for the community because we do a lot of work, not just with Native Americans, but with the South Asian community, with the Hispanic community, these sort of things, uh, somebody who can uh, can help us with those kinds of connections. So we're looking for, for those three positions at the moment. Yeah, lots of great things going on with the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra. Again, it's Delta David Geyer, the music director and conductor. David, we are out of time, believe it or not. No, well, but how about it? it? <laughs> But if anybody has any more questions about the season or opportunities, programs that you guys have, what's a good website or phone number to look into? Yeah, you've got uh, sdsymphony.org. That's your best resource. And it has not only the season and all of that subscription uh, stuff, but it also has a lot of information on like Lakota Music Project. If you want to learn more about it, there's all kinds of drop down menus that have information on that. All right. Awesome. Again, it's Delta David Geyer. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, David. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.